Okay, good. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, welcome everybody. This is a meeting of the steering committee of the Vermont Climate Council. Uh, thanks for coming together today. We have uh, three members of the steering committee here. So we have a quorum to get going. We have an agenda that's been dropped in the chat and online. Um, and as we typically do, we would want to just start with approving our minutes from the last meeting. It's hyperlinked in the agenda. If anybody needs a moment to look at that, please we do. We have four members of the steering committee, oh. correct? <laughs> Jared too. And Jared, yes, sorry, sorry, apologies. Uh, and Jared, yes. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Secretary Moore. <laughs> ah, appreciate the prompt. Um, okay. So we have four of you here and that's wonderful. Um, so the first thing to do uh, is if anybody has questions on those minutes from last time, I'll give you a moment um, to, to look through that. Are there any concerns or need for more time to look at those minutes? Okay, great. So I'm not hearing any concerns on the minutes um, or requests for more time. So we'll consider those approved. Thanks everybody. Um, all right, so that gets us into the meat of our agenda. We've got a number of things. We're gonna start with this decision-making um, protocol and idea. <clears throat> uh, we're then gonna go to um, looking at uh, this cross-cutting issues task group challenge um, <clears throat> and how we want to make progress on that. We want to talk about the guidance for the subcommittees on the prioritization and the applying the five foundational criteria that we looked at in the council meeting um, and look at the revised version based on the council meeting. And then we need to look at the agendas for the next two meetings, which are the September 28th and October 5th. So we got a number of things to do um, and let's see how we do um, and work in our way through them. The first is on decision-making. And this is a piece where um, it's come up a couple of times now. It came up as part of the frustrations in our last steering committee meeting. And it came up at the end of the council meeting of how are we actually, as we're moving into this phase of compiling content for our climate action plan, um, how are we going to be making decisions you know, on the council? Um, and how are we going to do that also in the subcommittees and in this steering committee? And so what I sent around, and it just got sent around late yesterday, or early this morning, I can't remember, but it was late, um, uh, a draft set of ideas that pulls on the roadmap document that you all um, agreed on in, back in March at the beginning of the process. So that document, I can show it on my screen in a sec, um, and it's online, but it sort of cuts and pastes the relevant sections about what we meant by consensus-based decision-making and this majority vote um, approach that we have in the, in the actual statute. So we cut and paste that. And then we say, so what is this going to mean in practice as we're trying to actually going making decisions um, <clears throat> getting towards December 1st? And in that, I laid out some ideas, and I'm happy to walk through them briefly, particularly because this came a little bit later than um, we would have normally liked to send. So why don't I just put them up on my screen for one second, and then we'll have a quick uh, round about that and see how we're feeling and what we need to do about this, and if we're in a position to make some decisions on it today, which is the uh, expectation that we can try to do. So let me just pull it up real quick on my screen. <clears throat> I'm pulling up a version in Word so that we can actually, if we want to do some adjusting in it, we have the, we can do that in real time. Okay. So as I mentioned, the top part of this document is just the, which is an italicis, is just cut and paste out of what was agreed to early in the process about a consensus-based protocol and uh, in, in the majority voting uh, piece that is in the statute. Then I mentioned just quickly at the bottom here, sort of a couple big ideas. One is making sure we're being very clear what people are being asked to agree to, right? It's different to being a gap, you know, providing input to a subcommittee, which will go back and make some changes, right? So essentially you're agreeing to 
the, the notes, right? Agreeing to the messages you're sending back to the subcommittee to keep working, right? Versus you're actually making a decision as a council in this case on content that'll work its way into the uh, December 1st initial uh, cap, right? So parsing that out, being clear what the decision is and giving time in advance for people to look at that, uh, of what they're being asked to do. So that's sort of like the basics. And the other pieces, if we're making changes in real time, which I hope we do, because that's the part of discussion, is you can adapt in real time and address concerns. We write down those changes and we show them on a screen. So again, you know what you are agreeing to or not agreeing to. Okay, so that's one piece, is the clarity of the request. And the next piece is what does it mean in practice to have your consensus-based approach, right? And in this text, what, I, what we're putting forward here is a sort of clearer, hopefully a clearer pathway to say, this is what it's gonna look like in practice, right? If we're not able to achieve unanimous, everybody's given thumbs up in the moment, we need to work through those concerns. We can work through them in, in real time. And then when we're out of time in an agenda item, then we need to take stock of where we are and decide what to do. Right. In taking stock, we will increasingly be using little straw polls. We can do it in the chat real quick. Just, you know, the one, two, three, how am I doing kind of thing. Just figure out where people are. And then I suggest three sort of uh, pathways on this, right, where you can um, <clears throat> uh, you can uh, either uh, first you can you can either folks can uh, be invited to express their concerns in the minutes of the meetings and stand aside and allow the proposal to move forward, right? So that's one way to deal with it. And hopefully by letting people clearly express what's concerning and put that in the, in the minutes, then that's one way they can move forward. And the sort of real-time polling can give people a temperature check in the room of where things are at. And if that's not successful, I think we still need to offer the opportunity potentially to let people go off and try to fix that problem. And in the very small amount of time that we have from now to December 1, there still is time to do that and bring back ideas to the council and saying, listen, a, a group of us tried to solve this problem. We solved it either by adjusting the text or by being very clear that in our, in our initial cap, we're gonna have some caveats put in there in a footnote saying for some counselors, this, you know, they had a different view on this and they thought X, Y, and Z. Uh, we won't have time when we get back to the council to have a big discussion. So that's really where we're gonna need to say yes, no. And if we're really not having a, uh, a, a good time of that with a consensus-based approach, we activate a more formal voter, voting kind of protocol. I know there's been a fair amount of questions about like, should we be moving more quickly to votes as a way to sort of move things along? Um, and our recommendations from where we stand, at least from sort of facilitating the process is, uh, we would wanna push that back as our very last resort because it has some toxic um, uh, after effects sometimes when you move quickly to that. And we think there's a possibility to move expeditiously through this uh, while using your vote as your backup and not as sort of your go-to uh, move things along quickly. So that's what this document tries to do is lay out what that pathway is. Um, and majority voting is available when we've exhausted those pathways. Um, and it's certainly available when we get to December 1st as well, after we've done all of our best effort to get this going uh, and we're struggling to, to allow folks to let it to walk forward, then we can obviously activate that majority voting piece that is part of the statute. So that's what this document is. Let me stop talking and say, are there immediate reactions that people want to offer up here um, and, and what's being put forward here or confusions that this doc creates when people see it? Jane? I, I don't wanna take the floor from steering committee members, but I do just wanna ask the question um, in our review of this, my review of this yesterday, um, I know we went back and forth a bit, but at the beginning, there is the process that comes from the process roadmap that speaks to subcommittees. Um, and that um, process then down at the beginning, we don't have a follow through about how this, um, is this still the decision-making process for subcommittees without any clarity needed? And I, I sense that 
some clarity is still needed for um, to further advance the decision making by subcommittees. And I have some specific questions in that space. Um, uh, but I just want to say that it. I think if we move to adopt a document such as this, we should carry forward um, an update or any revisions or simply state that the decision making by subcommittees is the same as envisioned in the process roadmap. So just a clarifying point, because I think some of that real substantive um, converse. Oh, yeah, there. Well, it's our it's there that at the bottom. You just hadn't scrolled all the way. Um, right. And so I, I think we just need to ensure that we agree on that. Um, and one of the questions has been around um, counselor designees um, in that process. And so I think we just want to name that and um, come to consensus around um, how counselor designees act in subcommittees. Great. Thanks. Secretary Moore. Oh, good. I'm not on mute. Uh, I can you scroll. Oh, I don't back up. I just so I guess I am. Um, struggling with how the first and second sub bullets under the consensus based approach, the, the real time polling and the or no, wait, no, I lost my spot, sorry. Clearly show how through polling how counselors view, view the proposal versus what it means to step aside. Like it, it seems like both of those are sort of getting to the same end, right? Where somebody is, is um, uncomfortable with a recommendation and I'm wondering, I'm trying to understand the, the difference. Yeah, I think what it's trying to do is be as transparent as possible in the moment about where the room is at or where the group is at. And this, you could say the council or a subcommittee. So it's so there's some transparency about how people are feeling. That's why we try to suggest the polling is like get that transparency. And that way, counselors can say, hmm, looks like I'm kind of alone here or hmm, look, a lot of people have a similar concern. Let's really lean into it. So it's an it creates the conditions for folks to say, OK, let's just let this move forward. I'm happy if I have my concerns captured in the record. Right. Or someone might say, like, I still really need to solve this concern if I'm going to be able to stand behind this climate action plan. But that's the person, the purpose of the polling is just to show transparently what's happening in the room at that moment. Does that yeah, help? I just I guess I, I wonder if that isn't sort of at the wrong level. Like to me, if we're already at the point where if most counselors can live with a proposal but we can't achieve unanimous support, it seems like the two options are then folks have their concerns memorialized or um, we move on to the the right. drafting a, a revision or just um, moving forward without consensus, right? Like I wonder if that doesn't belong up higher somewhere in the the process. We've got sort of as part of the temperature taking, maybe. Yes. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's confusing to have it listed here. I guess the point was this happened, therefore it's clear, right? Yeah, but it right. actually happened earlier up. Yeah. Okay. That's helpful. Thank you. Thanks. Jared? Yeah, I think overall um, this is, it helps provide some, some clarity. I like the bullets and the sub bullets in terms of process. I think this does move move us forward and I so I really appreciate it overall. The one thing that stood out to me that I think is probably worth pausing on and it may not be part of this agenda but I'd like to um, try to resolve it sooner rather than later is up top if you can scroll up David there is um, in the um, even before that in the kind of um, yes so does say the council will use a high bar to include multiple viewpoints in the final report and will will agree on what constitute that high bar prior to discussions on a consolidated draft of the action plan document. Since we're a lot closer to that happening um, than we were when we drafted this, I think it would probably be worthwhile to propose something as, as a what that high bar should be. Um, I would, you know, just as a starting point for discussion, I kind of think of um, more than a third or eight members of the council 
um, kind of aligns well with, um, you know, a, a critical mass of certainly not majority support, but I think if more than a third, um, you know, the, the type of thing that would prevent a super majority of support um, has a concern, then that feels to me like a, a, an appropriate threshold. I haven't fully thought through that. I don't, I don't know all the implications of that, but that's, that's a, I'm not saying we need to settle that now. I think no. folks agree with that. Maybe we could, but I think we should do it sooner rather than later so we don't have it unresolved by the time that we actually get to that question. Thanks, Jared. I'm glad you brought that up. Liz? So I'm at risk of in real time testing our process here. <laughs> um, I don't, so this is really helpful to have. I agree with everything Jared said in getting this in front of us. And I'm having a little trouble articulating exactly where my concern is, but let me just try here. Um, I think it has to do with the notion of the polling and Julie's point about where in the process that gets. What I'm a little bit concerned about in seeing some of the group dynamics here and just, you know, as a human experiencing them in other settings is sometimes people aren't ready to affirmatively support, but also may not be ready or capable of affirmatively articulating the concern in a way they feel you know safely can be done even in a polling situation. And it relates to what Jared just said about the viewpoint because here in your document, you say that when concerns are noted, they'll be put in the minutes. But, but I think that's a separate process from a formal vote, obviously, so that they will be expected to allow the whole thing to generally move forward with consensus while noting their concern and also not necessarily having it rise to the level of where it gets noted in the final report. And there's a lot in there. And um, so I'm trying to envision where this could fall down. And it seems to me that there will be issues on which counselors have concern that they will wonder where they need and how loudly they need to raise the concern because if it moves forward with apparent consensus and then is never reflected in the final report because it doesn't hit that high bar, um, they're potentially losing out on their voice, their interest, and you know that doesn't seem good. And meanwhile, I'm sort of feeling that way right now because I like this document and part of me wants to say, you know what, this is, this is a good articulation next step from our process roadmap. So let's put this in front of the council. And yet I'm hesitating to do that because I feel like there are places in here where this conversation at the council level will not be satisfying because those details are not addressed. So I'll stop there. It's a great example right there, Liz, I think of the challenge, right? So for instance, we've got 15 minutes on this agenda, or we even had like 10 minutes on this agenda to deal with this issue, right? So what do we do with the 10 minutes we are doing on this issue? How do we end this right now? Um, so this is a good example. We can say, listen, we looked at this in principle. It feels like it's the right thing. We have some doubts about it. We got it less than 24 hours ago. It's too much to ask us to say something definitive right now. That's kind of what I'm hearing from you, Liz, as well. Hang on. <laughs>
six climate council meetings between now and then, one of which is on December 1st, which really means we have five council meetings to make decisions, uh, recognizing that obviously those are punctuated by these meetings as well, where decisions can be made. And I, I appreciate that this in theory uh, would and could work, but I am concerned about in practice, given our time constraints. And so I wonder if all of those bullets, sub bullets, and then sub sub bullets, if we have to jump through each of those hoops before we can even get to a vote. And, and because one of them actually even recommends like coming back at, at a future meeting to reassess, there just aren't enough meetings left. I'm seeing Jane nodding a lot. Um, and so I, I don't, I appreciate, especially you being from Consensus Building Institute, being kind of, um, a professional and understanding that there can be some toxicity around voting. And yet we have a December 1 deadline that is formalized in statute. And I think that we need to be a little bit more adaptable to where we are in our process now and recognize that, at least as I understand it, a lot of decisions will need to be made. So if there's a way to still achieve consensus, but perhaps in a um, a condensed version with fewer hoops to jump through before we can get to majority vote, I would recommend that. Um, and then to Jared's point earlier about going up and recognizing how we how we um, commemorate dissent and what that level is. I appreciate you saying that, Jared. If you go back into like the dredges of our YouTube channel, I made that exact comment like in February about needing to do that before we got to a point where we had to use an exact example. Um, so I appreciate spending some time on that too and figuring out what, what the best means to do that is today. Okay. So, okay, so here we have the limits of time right in front of us, right? Because uh, we have a lot of things to do in our meeting today. It's unclear to me whether we're gonna be able to solve all these things right now in real time, whether it's the uh, the piece about naming more explicitly that threshold of things that end up in the final report as a caveat versus things that end up that are more appropriate in a set of minutes, getting this sort of the right balance with the moving expeditiously. So I feel like we're in a place where we need to put a pin in it and say, this is good enough for us to do our next set of meetings using what we have here. Uh, knowing we have some work to do and we get that work done as a steering committee prior to our next meeting um, and show up in our next meeting and solve it. That would be my suggestion so that we don't spend all of today's meeting on this. Uh, that we use, this is essentially as a working draft for us for the next two meetings that we have, of which most of the time in the next two meetings is consolidating a set of notes back to the steering, uh, to the subcommittees. Uh, we're not actually consolidating uh, content with a few exceptions. Um, and that way we're able to move forward and really nail it in a place that it's hard to do right now in real time in this meeting without eating up all the rest of our time. Jane? Yeah, um, I certainly appreciate that, David. I I do, um, as David knows, um, uh, Lauren's comments really resonate with me. Um, and I will just say, um, that I, we have some actually pretty substantive issues coming up at the next few meetings around um, greenhouse gas inventory that has to be revisited and a challenging conversation around um, some components of that. And then also something that seems simple, but as we'll visit um, revisit prioritization today, um, we'll be talking about definitions for cost effectiveness and feasibility that I also think like we'll have to take action on because it um it influences prioritization of which there's no time to kick the can down the road on. And so, yeah, I, I worry, I'll, I'll just say that my agenda items today don't need as much time as I am given on the um, agenda. And I wonder if there is a way or just appreciation for any nuances around this document, because I certainly feel the time crunch and worry about council meetings not coming to resolution on action items, regardless of how uh, prepared they are with materials um, and such. Okay. If if everybody's okay with taking some time out of the other pieces of our agenda today, we can definitely invest some time right now in real time trying to figure out these fixes, right? The fix about, you know, 
from a, what Liz was trying to articulate, which is related to Jared's point of what's that bar between things that I, as a counselor, for instance, I really wanna see in the final report as a caveat, so my concern is expressed there, versus things that are okay just to show up in the minutes and I'm allowing everything to move forward. That's a fix we need to think about. What Lauren says about, is there a way that we can be faster um, and we don't get stuck? Um, and so a specific suggestion to change this towards uh, speed and, and recognizing the limited time frame we have. Those are fixes we can work on right now. And I'd welcome folks is, if we wanna spend another 10 minutes on this to see what people would do to, to adjust this document to address the concerns you're expressing. What would be some specific changes that would help you feel like this is in the right place? I mean, just going in order, David, can we can we pause to test for support for that one third threshold, just a straw poll to see what people think about that so we can get more clarity and resolution on that point? Right. And so this is where you would have some sort of expression in the document itself that says for some counselors, blah, blah, blah. Right. It's like memorializing that on the particular point, a concern. And you're saying there's a minimum, there should be a minimum number of counselors who subscribe to that sort of uh, um, viewpoint so that it can end up in the document, right? That's what we're talking about? Yeah. Okay. So that's one way to do it for sure. Uh, that, that, you know, you have to have a minimum number, you know, of X number of folks who have to be there with you uh, sharing that concern so that it shows up to say for some counselors, dot, 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 dot. Right. So that's, or, yeah. Or it might be a footnote that says, well, this was the majority opinion. There was a group of ex counselors, eight or more, that, that, you know, had this. This other view. Yep. Preferred this approach. Yeah. Okay. So that's one way to do it. Uh, how do people feel about that? Liz, you have your hand up over that? Yeah. I'm just worried that it will get, um, tied up into the issue of what's getting a formal vote and what's not because that proposal you know I don't have any problem with sort of the magnitude of what you're talking about Jared but um, but it presumes that there's actually a vote and so that's what I was trying to articulate earlier if we're going with this consensus process where people are expressing concerns but there is no vote and then we don't have an ability to include other viewpoints unless there is a vote and it hits this threshold. There's like this space in between there that feels um, unaddressed. And especially if the context of voting, I'll just put a, I'll put a little bit of agreement, I guess this is, I think supporting what Lauren said earlier on timing, but also going maybe a little bit further afield. I understand your point about voting possibly becoming toxic and I do see in here that later down, it says any counselor can call for a vote. So I can imagine this process being utilized in ways that are become difficult, okay? But if we need a one third to even get a high bar footnote in, I think we're asking for votes. Maybe that's a short way of saying it. And if that's not the intention, we need to think about that. Right, yeah. Jared, when you I'll, hear I'll just, that, well, yeah. I'm sorry, before I go totally off mute, I would actually be okay personally with um, having, I don't want to say a lower bar because I really don't mean that, but having a greater tolerance maybe for some of the uh, uh, opposing or differing viewpoints being expressed in the document if it allowed for uh, better discussion at the council, a better way of airing those views, and um, a more productive process getting us to the end. So, yeah. I'm going to drop my screen for a second uh, and I'll share it back up when I'm done, just so we don't distract from my note taking. Um, but that's a really interesting point, Liz, and thanks for that. And I, I'll just say another process that I've been involved, it has not been a, a threshold of, say, a third. It's been like one or two or three or you know, a handful kind of thing. Uh, Secretary Moore? Yeah, I, I, I think that that's an important point Liz raises. And, and I 
suspect there will be very few counselors who would take satisfaction from seeing their concern reflected only in the minutes. Um, and so it, it may just it sort of help ease the path forward if there's a clear opportunity to, to document their concerns in the plan itself. And so very much would support, I don't know what Liz, you ended up with lower, lower bar, <laughs> lower threshold um, of, of counselors um, than a third. Great. Jared, thoughts on that? <laughs> I, I really hear and appreciate what Liz and Secretary Moore just said. I'm also just thinking through, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate and th think through implications and potential unintended consequences. And one would be, I mean, I think one of the things we want to do with the plan is, is have it be clear and have a flow to it that is accessible. And I just worry that if we do it too low, the, the plan will be littered with these dissents I mean, maybe one way to do that would be to have an appendix of endnotes, you know, where somebody did have a dissenting viewpoint that was not where the, the kind of will of the full or the majority of the council is. But I wouldn't want to open up a process by which kind of every sentence or every paragraph is having, but Councillor X or Councillor X and Y said, said this just in terms of the accessibility and clarity and, and, and flow of what we are producing. Great. So I think oh, one of the ways I've seen sort of better practice with this is you put it in footnotes, you don't put names and you have to co coalesce around a single, you know, a, a group of folks who agree with like, for some members, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you could also put sort of a subjective threshold if you want to, to say, the threshold here is I cannot stand behind this plan as a package without this particular point being mentioned. And so you elevate subjectively sort of the level. That can be hard to do in real time, but it's, I've seen it work multiple times. So where are we landing, folks? We're landing in a place of there has to be a certain number of of counselors that have a similar concern. So that's one, you need a minimum number, probably not quite a third, probably something lower is what I'm hearing. Um, and you really wanna have a system where it's not disrupting the text of the document and there is a flow to the document um, and you're not creating this Pandora's box of caveats all over the place, right? That's what I'm hearing uh, from you, is that, is that right? Um, is there, are there other things you want to say about that? If you were like explaining this to the council, this is our, when we talk about this, what else are we trying to say? It has to be a minimum number. You know, you can put a number, you can put a, say a handful, right? To say it has to be a bunch of you. Um, and one, nuance, to, yeah. one nuance I might offer is that like, in, in trying to get to a number, I don't know as though it, it requires voting if we're using that straw poll piece of the process. Right. Okay. Would you want to do something more specific than needs to be several counselors? <clears throat> Liz, go ahead, please. Oh, sorry. I wasn't going to speak on that very point. I just, I mean, as we're sitting here, I appreciate Jane uh, giving us the time to talk through it more because I think this has helped advance and it solidified my thinking that probably uh, this needs another look. <laughs> Sorry, it's getting to Lauren's point that we don't have a lot of meetings, but I do feel like having received this yesterday, um, in a perfect world, I and others could have maybe offered edits or, you know, done something a little bit more like that, because then you'd have um, something concrete to work with rather than working through it in the meeting. So I would like to put back on the table the idea that we indicate where our concerns are and continue working on it rather than try to reach agreement right. Thanks, Liz. <clears throat> I have a similar feeling. We can at least memorialize what we've done uh, to say we, we made this kind of progress here in identifying the things we're trying to fix in this document. We put some ideas on the table and fixing this one of them, and we wanna come back and do that. And what folks can do is send uh, those concerns to me uh, and or to Jane, 
and we can prep that conversation up so the next time we're really re ready to rock and roll and, and make a, a decision on this. Lauren? So is the recommendation now, we're kind of zooming back out. So Liz offered that we use, or maybe it was Jared, offered that we use this how to capture dissent as an example of how a process might look. Are we now pushing this whole document under that? Let's, let's take the time to provide some comments and feedback to you. Or are we now zooming back out and looking at the how many steps are we taking from consensus before we move to majority voting? Or is the whole thing going into pause mode? I think in the interest of time, the whole thing feels like it's going in pause mode. And what we haven't done is addressed your specific issue of what it looks like in practice to have a version of this that feels more accelerated in decision-making. We, we haven't put specific ideas on the table. If you wanna do that right now before we hit the pause button on this piece of work and move to the next agenda item, that would be great. Um, and then I think we should, I would recommend taking Liz's suggestion of hitting the pause button, naming where we're at, and moving on. We can do that entirely. I just wasn't sure if that's what the recommendation was. Yeah, no, it's for the whole thing. Just in the, and because we do have other things we need to do today. And it does feel like people wanna think a little bit more about this as well. Jared, last word on this and then we'll... I would just note that one consideration we, we might consider is whether or not that kind of flow changes as we go forward in time. I can imagine for the next council meeting and maybe the one after that as written, it could work. I think as we get into the last few before the action plan is due, we may need to skip some of those interim steps because there won't be the ability to like identify a group, take it offline, come back. And so, so maybe we aim to start with kind of as written, but it's gonna need to condense as we get closer to the deadline and don't have that luxury. Thanks, Jared. And I think out of practicality, there will be two meetings between now and the next time you all meet as a steering committee. So it sounds like what we can do is apply this with as best as we can in these two meetings with this spirit, um, and then circle back and really figure out what we wanna do in the next steering committee. And that will match up with what you're saying, Jared, is increasingly developing those pieces of content that are gonna go in there. Lauren? the next two council meetings we'll have two council meetings before our next steering committee meeting yeah so that would leave two or three council meetings for a formal decision making process that we've all agreed to yes and uh what the difference though is what's happening in the next two meetings the majority of what's happening our subcommittees presenting ideas and receiving feedback from the council there are a handful of specific things such as what jane mentioned with the uh, coming back to the greenhouse gas accounting thing that we looked at already last meeting. And now we have a new version that uh, addresses the concerns of ag and ecosystem. But uh, where I think Jared's point, which I'm hearing, it is as we get closer to the deadline, we will be actually having to make more decisions on material that is going into the initial plan. Whereas the next two meetings, it's a minority of what we're doing. And are these tweaks that we intend to make not something that council can decide on since they'll be meeting two times between now and steering? It just seems like this is something that how we make decisions is something we should do as soon as possible if we can't do it today, which it seems like we're not doing today. So perhaps, you, you know, Jane can give us all a deadline to give our feedback or recommendations for how to, how to tweak this document. And then maybe it could go before the full council with steering committee support. I don't know. It, it, it seems like we need to do this sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, it is on the agenda for the council meeting, and we can put forward a specific proposal there if you all want to do that to say, put it in our hands to take all your feedback, make a new version, put it out in front of the council. That's one way to do it. Um, otherwise, you all can look at it and in your next meeting decide. But if the four of you right now wanna say, you know what, I'm gonna think about it this week, I'm gonna send my feedback and <clears throat> we're gonna send this up. The issue is we need to get in front of the council in time too. So it can't, co it can't just be put up there like Tuesday morning. It needs to be there several days before. Okay. <clears throat> so 
David, I, I, guess I would ask that question explicitly. And um, in order to do so, I think steering committee members should be committing to feedback by tomorrow, unfortunately, if we wanted to then provide it to the council with adequate time to ask them to review. So the, the question is, does that timeline work for steering committee members? Um, and if not, then the suggestion could either be the following council meeting or the steering, the following steering committee meeting. Okay, so let's just test it right now. Um, put it right out there. You can drop it in the chat or say it. Like, is your preference to get your feedback in right away and we put this in front of the council and the council makes a decision on it uh, a next meeting? Or is your preference to, to uh, use what we have as a draft here, use that in the next two meetings, and then you all and your steering committee um, uh, finalize this next time? So let's just go around with the four of you between those two options, which, where do you land? Liz, you got your hand up, you wanna start? I was about to put in chat door number three. Okay. <laughs> so my, preference is, my preference is that we provide feedback by tomorrow. We put it in front of the council for its uh, September 28th meeting, but specifically with the message to the council that we want them to talk about it, review it and take action, consider uh, for October 5th in case there is a need to revise. I, I don't support personally anyway, putting this in front of them and requiring them to say yes or no on the 28th because this is the core to how the council is gonna make its decisions. So door number three. Great, um, I saw Jared with his thumbs up, uh, Secretary Moore, Lauren, does that work? Okay, so you all have agreed to provide feedback by tomorrow. We will put this in front of the council in a revised form based on that feedback. And we will decide in the subsequent meeting in the council to say, yep, we're good. And That's I would just I, yep. note, as long as this is in line with what you were suggesting, Liz and Julie and Lauren agree, that I think that it would be fine if as part of that, we don't come to agreement. If we say there was discussion about what should the threshold be, there was, you know, I think that can go in front of the council. I don't think it needs to be That's right. you know, a final document. We can note where there wasn't a final decision or where there were different ideas that we have not yet settled on. Great. Right, so we will be faithful to your comments and not try to pretend that there's more agreement than there is. Okay. Okay. Everybody comfortable with that as a pathway? Any last concerns on this? Okay, so really look forward to it. I'll send these notes around as well that I just took in the document. So you have that kind of annotated thing to jog your memory on it. Um, <clears throat> and then do send it back. Again, don't CC everyone will we'll run afoul of the public meetings issue. <clears throat> okay, thank you. That's great. Um, the next piece on the agenda is the cross-cutting group. Jane, what would you like to say about that? Okay, thanks. <laughs> Um, um, hopefully, since I, I need to um, leave in a few minutes, I can cover both these topics fast and leave space for you all to have a conversation, and I'll be listening in as well. So first and foremost, um, thank you all for um, the really great conversation that we had on both these issues I'm going to talk about at the council meeting last week around the drafting process as well as um, prioritization. Hopefully, both of them um, are feeling in a good place after the conversation today and then going forward. So for the cap drafting process, um, you'll note that we asked counselors to lean in um, to work with us closely. Um, the ask was really around um, first and foremost, thinking about a group that we could convene to think about the cap outline um, and specifically thinking about where and what we elevate within the cap around cross-cutting issues and themes. Um, and then also to think about components of the climate action plan that need uh, direct counselor engagement and don't fall directly with a subcommittee right now. So really thinking about um, the process for cross-cutting ideas and themes and then drafting of components really specific around that, what's currently called the implementation section, but I did hear loud and clear that is more of like a framework for implementation for the climate action plan. Um, we really were hoping and were able to put together, I think, um, a suggested group to all of you that um, has representative um, backgrounds um, for the area of work that we're looking to cover. And really also with the recognition that these counselors 
would also be the direct link as the work sort of moves from the subcommittee up to the council so that they have a direct foot in the door of both the council as well as the subcommittee. So could be giving some assurances to the subcommittees that their voice is being carried up into the climate action plan um, and with the council. So um, I'm sorry, I don't have a more formal presentation for you all today, but um, we were successful in recruiting five counselors from the five subcommittees um, with varying capacity um, and varying interest in those components that I just spoke to. And so what I'd like to do, um, if this needs like a formal blessing, I'll, I'll just put this out there. Um, we have Joey, uh, Johanna Miller from Cross Sector, Jared from Science and Data, Lauren from Ag and Ecosystems, Catherine Dimitric um, from Rural Resilience and Adaptation, and Iris um, from Just Transition. And so what I'd like to suggest based on that group, um, which is not restricted to other counselor engagement, um, I heard from other counselors that they were a bit concerned around the time commitment. Um, and so we'd like to move forward with an initial meeting to think about those components and the real commitment of time specific to those um, in the coming days um, and ask that um, for your opinion on both the content of what we'll be discussing how best to formalize this, and then um, thinking about any steering committee comments and comp composition of that group going forward. Hopefully that's enough, and uh, Secretary Moore has her hand up, so happy to answer any questions. Yeah, go ahead, please. I'm going to suggest, I, I think we probably need a member of the administration to be part of that group as well, um, <laughs> which may mean I'm volunteering myself since I'm the only one Always here. Dangerous <laughs> to say things like that. <laughs> I know. But I, I do feel like, you know, in the, the not dissimilar to how we've structured the steering committee where we've tried to have a balance um, from from all three sort of appointing authorities, for lack of a better word. Um, I, I think it would, would serve us well to carry that into this construct as in, in addition. I'm more than happy um, to move forward with that based on your discussion today with all of you. But just also want to reiterate that this is not a decision-making body, um, that this is a, bot, a, a group of folks just really working in service to carry the work forward with counselors involved between the weekly meetings of the steering committee and the council. So happy to have um, others um, step in, but also just want to ensure that it's not a group that will be making decisions. Oh, under, understood. Just it's it's more the, the sort of the, I think that's an important principle that we've deployed so far and would like to see it maintained. Great. Okay. So I guess the question to this group now is um, any concerns about the way this is rolling forward? Any um, input we need to provide to Jane um, about this for us to feel comfortable with this rolling forward? With the suggestion as well, uh, from Secretary Moore, that, that some of the administration's also there, perhaps her. Any other, any concerns about how this is going? Okay, I'm not seeing any, so we'll take that as a green light to proceed as how you're doing it, and also with participation of Secretary Moore or somebody else in the group. Okay, great. Jane, next, prioritization and yes. guidance. Briefly, I'll just, you know, Billy's, to Billy's comment in the chat, hopefully this won't make this go um, more discussion, but I will just say that um, I've been seeing this committee as a bridge between the subcommittee and the council. And again, thinking about how we elevate issues and think about how we further their implementation that may come back to guiding process at subcommittee levels. Um, but really it's, it's intended to be a bridge and um, have direct counselor engagement in real time, thinking about the climate action plan as well as um, strict drafting components that um, need to be covered by someone. So hopefully that does it. Um, for, and I'm happy to talk to you more, Billy, and to make sure that's explicit. Um, so the prioritization, recognizing I need to run very quickly, I, I want to suggest that what's online right now um, is a modified framework for the prioritization that um, was adapted based on the conversation at the council last week. We intended to clarify the process that would take place um, around not doing a professional judgment layer at the subcommittee level, level around ready to implement versus um, needing further development, but that rather 
on the prioritization method that we move forward with based on those five foundational criteria will happen um, across all actions. And that prioritization will inform an implementation schedule. Um, and then I, we, I have further tried to clarify in that presentation that based on that implementation schedule, um, I've heard from the majority of folks that we'd like to see the actions level, uh, the actions within that implementation schedule bucketed based on the driver of the implementation. So if it's a policy, legislative change, action, rulemaking, or um, an action that is can be taken on by everyday Vermonters. So I've tried to reflect that in the presentation as is up right now. The big sort of question still as we move forward with rolling this out with subcommittees is that we need to have had consensus around the definitions and how we're applying those definitions um, and with what measure and clarity. And um, I think that um, one of the decision points that was put to science and data was around the definitions for feasibility, aka if we want to call it technical feasibility or broaden that, and then cost effectiveness. Um, and I know Jared, um, Jared with TJ Poor and others met yesterday um, to come up with um, preliminary definitions in those buckets, and the science and data subcommittee will be taking them up tomorrow. Um, our hope is that um, as you move to look at the agendas, um, and with TJ and Jared here, you can speak to this. Um, I feel like those definitions need to be approved at, like yesterday in order to get the clarity to the subcommittees, and I know um, TJ suggested that the Science and Data Committee might need more time, but I'm hopeful that um, the, it could be on the Climate Council agenda for as soon as next week, even though I know TJ pushed back on that. But I do think that clarity around um, prioritization, especially as ag and ecosystems and rural resilience have now are moving to this week, finalize their suite of actions, we need to be thinking about how we pivot to prioritization. And then my final comment about the changes on prioritization, as you'll note in the PowerPoint that is online, is that in my conversations with our consultants who will um, hopefully be signing their contract today, I feel like I've been saying that for days, um, but um, as we bring someone on board to support the equity component of the work, we've been thinking about and are trying to have a conversation tomorrow with co-chairs and the consultant around perhaps a stepwise approach to prioritization, recognizing that based on time constraints, um, really the support that the equity consultant will bring will be limited in the number of actions that they're able to help, help subcommittees review and prioritize with the scoring rubric, so that it would be really helpful to have first thought about the impact of those actions, the progress towards your GWSA requirements, and the feasibility and cost effectiveness as an initial screen to get you to that implementation schedule so that those high priority actions are the ones that we're then transparently reviewing with respect to the scoring rubric. So um, I, I encourage you all to look at the presentation. Um, I think that perhaps um, there's more discussion warranted around this and maybe I'm looking to David to think about um, what, if any, action is needed in this bucket other than I'll, I'd suggest that as we refine the work, um, one of the original envisions of that counselor group in the cap drafting process would be to think about prioritization. And so maybe that would be a good place to just get this fine tuned and rolled out to the subcommittees as soon as possible, recognizing that the definition clarity sits with the council, not, not anybody else. But we, we've adapted based on what we heard from the council, and I think things are moving forward once we have the definitions, I should say. So we had said in our agenda today that we wanted to sort of review and approve what Jane's put out there in a revised PowerPoint based on the council conversation. That's still the plan right now. So I would say for folks here, the steering committee members, you know, is there anything standing in the way of you saying, yep, let's go forward with what is in that presentation as our guidance to subcommittees? Is there anything that we need to talk about right now? Um, um, and sorry, as I transition to just being on the phone, I just want to say that um, I could see an approval of the prioritization in that presentation with the caveat that the council approve the definitions so that we're all in support of this. Great. Thanks, Jane. 
Liz? Um, my question is around the discussion on impact slide and um, the way that the um, current revision reads with uh, bucketed high, medium, low in two different groups, uh, what the intention is there. And so by voting to, uh, by the way, everything else you've said, great, totally agree with the rest of it, including getting the council to sign on to the definition. So the remaining question I have is just on this discussion on impact page, what it is intended to convey and by us saying, yes, this looks good. What are we actually asking counselors to do given that bucketed or in the middle of that page? Ooh, yeah. Yeah, okay, good reminder. Thank you, Liz. If I had walked through the presentation, I would have remembered that. I wanted to suggest that a conversation needs to happen with ag and ecosystems and rural resilience around impact. Um, we've been talking a lot about how impact speaks to CO2 emission reduction, but the space and the quantitative value of measurable goals is not clear for those two subcommittees right now. So um, it, those two definitions, one is taken and adapted from the hazard mitigation plan, and one is a different approach from um, a climate action plan that Marion brought up for us to consider. So there are two variable approaches with respect to how you could consider impact in the resilience adaptation sequestration space for those subcommittees, recognizing that for cross-sector, it'll be clearly um, documented based on the mitigation analysis that is done um, for a cross-sector, yeah. but it's less clear for the other subcommittees. Uh, I actually wondered because of cross-sector though, so that's interesting you say that. Is there an understanding <laughs> that I just don't have that cross-sector is applying on exactly what high, medium, low means for the mitigation or not yet? Okay, that's what I had understood not yet. So, so okay. Because when I was helping to do the chart with regard to my area of cross sector, I had a couple of comments like, wow, this is a really hard high, medium, low to even apply to this, given that we're not sure high, medium, low to what? You know what I mean? Um, so if that's a problem that applies, I would suggest it applies to that subcommittee. Great. Jared? Um. You know, I, I would also just say on this definitions question, I'm generally good with this. I, I appreciate what, and agree with what Liz just said. You know, I don't wanna get ahead of the science and data subcommittee because we're gonna discuss this all as a group tomorrow afternoon, but at least the subgroup of us that was looking at definitions, we came to agreement and consensus on a definition for technical feasibility. I will just flag so everyone kind of knows why we're hung up a little bit is there is a really clear and settled de definition for cost effectiveness with regard to greenhouse gas mitigation. It is the cost per ton avoided of greenhouse gas emissions. The challenge that we're running into is trying to identify a definition for cost effectiveness related to adaptation and resilience. The cost per what? Um, and so, you know, because the statute is really clear on the pollution reduction targets on the mitigation requirements, it's easy for us, I think, to identify a clear definition on cost effectiveness for mitigation. It's not as kind of like readily at hand and clear what a cost effectiveness definition would be in the other areas. And so that's where some of the challenges is emerging. We'll hopefully have more to report back after tomorrow, but just wanted to identify that. Thanks. Okay, so it sounds like this discussion on impact in this final slide five, it's it's not actually settled, if I understood Jane correctly. It's more like, you guys need to talk about this a little bit more. Um, and is that an okay place for you all to be? Do you want to give some guidance there um, as the Ag and Ecosystems Rural Resilience try to figure out this, um, this challenge in science and data helps with the definitional aspect of cost effectiveness as well? Is there anything else you wanna say about this? So um, just if I could just add to the to the extent that this is going to I'm, I'm concerned about this being on the agenda, frankly, for the this next week's meeting, I, I'm concerned about having the discussion on the definitions and the impact before it is uh, ready for prime time. And I know that there's um, there's a timing issue with all of this that we're crunch for time, but 
Uh, as far as the science and data committee is concerned, I'm hopeful that we come to agreement on Wednesday, but you know, given the history of our, our committee, and uh, I'm not positive that we will, and then in which case then bringing definitions to the full council, they won't have been <clears throat> consensus from the subcommittee. And that could just create, suck up a lot of time that we don't have. And so I'm, just want to put that out there. If if that's what we have to do, then we we can do it. But it just it it seems like we're at a pretty high risk of um, just having some endless debate on a on definitions that you know maybe some of that debate could have been could could have been managed if we had another week. And recognizing that our subcommittee met got the assignment last Tuesday, met on Friday, or meeting again on Wednesday. With a task group in between, we're we're moving a pace, but I just am concerned. Yeah, thanks, TJ. It's a good segue into the. Somebody has two um, audios hooked up, so if you, thanks. Um, the it's a good segue into looking at the agendas. And before we do, I just want to put a pause and say, from the steering committee, like, is there guidance we want to give right now? Um, as Jane moves forward with this and others move forward with this, are there things we need to say to provide additional guidance besides saying, keep going the way you're going? From steering committee members, is there, is there anything we need to do right now on this? Lauren? Did I hear correctly from Jane that she's recommending that the, the discussion on impact kind of be had within the respective subcommittees? and that each kind of subcommittee can define what impact looks like for their respective actions? I think she was saying it is a conversation that needs to happen at the subcommittee level, yes. Okay. I, I support that. Okay. All right, so if folks are okay, and I'm hearing that you're okay with progressing in the way this has been put out there in this revised version, then let's take up what TJ was saying when let's look at the agendas for the next two council meetings um, and when we wanna slot this in. Right now it's not in either of the meetings. And so we need to slot it into one of them. Um, I wonder though, if we, why don't we walk through September 28th first and then look at the next one uh, and then keep this in our mind. Like when are we gonna put in front of the council this definitional clarity um, that we're talking about? All right, let me share my screen with the with the what we're planning for these meetings. <clears throat> this is also these are this is just the document online. Okay. Um, so this is for September 28th, next week. Um, what we had planned to do is to put forward, we had made time to describe what the decision making protocol would be. Um, and then not actually take any action on it at the beginning and say, let's see how it goes as we go through the meeting. And then at the end of the meeting, we had scheduled time to take back, take this back up and to say, how did it go? What else do we want to say about this? Based on our conversation just prior, um, this may be a perfectly good approach. We may even take a lighter touch approach. We'll see. Um, but there's an opportunity at the front of this meeting to say, this is what we've been thinking about from a decision-making protocol. We don't need to make decisions on it right now. Liz? I don't personally believe we should even have in the agenda that the council would re revisit this and formally approve the approach. I, I, I would prefer to message to the council that we're putting this document out there for their review consideration and to see how it goes for the meeting and get feedback without putting any um, assumption that they're gonna get to a point where they formally approve it. Right. I agree with Liz. Okay. So we can take out that line in the back and replace that line with something that says for the council's review and consideration and to test how it works during this meeting. Yeah. Okay, great. <clears throat> All right. Um, fantastic. Okay. Then we go into these two blocks, both of which are a little bit under an hour. <clears throat> I think we budgeted here. What's this? 55 minutes. 
um, <clears throat> for each of the subcommittees, Ag and Ecosystem and Rural Resilience, to put forward their draft pathway strategies and actions. And the goal here is to present that content and to get consolidated feedback on it. So what I'll be doing is taking some real-time notes. You saw me do that last council meeting and then sharing those notes back to say, are these the big ideas? Um, and if there's some contradictory notes, just to name that. And if there's something we need to work on real quick, um, but to say, this is what's getting shared back to the subcommittee as reactions, right? We know that the subcommittees haven't done the deep analysis on the five foundational criteria, including the equity uh, work, right? We know it hasn't happened yet. So we're not creating that expectation that it's there. Okay, so 55 minutes each uh, for ag and ecosystems and then rural resilience. Um, and then the last thing we had on this agenda um, was the coming back to the greenhouse gas. And I keep putting the wrong name on this accounting. I think Jared, you have a better, more precise name, but the issue we had in the last- Inventory. Inventory, okay. Um, <clears throat> and uh, let me fix that. So it should read G greenhouse gas inventory. And supplemental accounting, I'll put it in the chat. Okay. And here, this is will be the one area where we're really going to test if this sort of consensus building moment of can we agree with this? And this is the thing that we stumbled on last time, and it was a little frustrating understanding what we we're trying to do in real time. And this time, we're going to try to be a little clearer to say, Ag and ecosystem and science and data spoke, right? Or at least task lead spoke and have a new version that explicitly tries to incorporate these concerns, right? This is it. Um, and then we'll do that moment of can everybody live with this, right? And then we'll work through the, if folks can't, how we're memorializing those comments in the, in the meeting minutes and or uh, needing to do it one more round. But this is one where it's like, we did one more round, we're done. Right, so uh, this is will be a test of our ability to make decisions as a council because this is actual content that we're putting into the um, document. And I would just say that on this one, you know, that group, the Ag and Ecosystems and the Greenhouse Gas Task Group of the Science and Data Subcommittee met today. It's not entirely clear that we've come to consensus or agreement on you know, a joint set of recommendations. We're gonna keep working on it, but it's possible that we're gonna need some flexibility on this agenda item, depending where we end up. When you say need some flexibility, I mean, does that mean you need time or because like- I, I don't know. Up? I mean, it, it feels like there are some things that have come forward that we need some time to understand the implications of what Ag and Ecosystems is recommending. Um, and maybe we'll get there in time, maybe we won't. Um, and depending on that, I think the options are either gonna be pulling this from the agenda, calling the question on the initial set of recommendations or having an updated set of recommendations. I don't, I don't know where we're gonna end up yet, unfortunately, because. In that, let's look at the next week's agenda and see if it, we could somehow push uh, to there, right? If this is the, because it would be a crying shame to do it one more time, like what happened last time. Um, and so should we take a look at the next, the following week's agenda to see if we think it would, it would fit better there? There's a question mark then if this would be an ideal time to put the definitions there. But again, I heard TJ being quite nervous about feeling like <clears throat> whether they'll be ready to do that. Um, let's, there's nothing else going on on this agenda. We were gonna quickly re revisit the decision-making. Um, this will not be like this, right? We are not asking them based on everything we've talked about, this, is, this will change, but this is an opportunity to say how to go, what feedback do you have and just, do a 10 minutes of that um, as a way of capturing that feedback. Okay. So let's just pull up the other one for a second. Iris, did you want to say something about this? Yeah, sorry. I know I'm not on the steering committee, um, but 
I, uh, Vanessa Rule put something in the chat um, and I know 350 has been working on a campaign for Just Transitions and I'm not noticing a, um, a Just Transitions uh, moment at the beginning. So I was wondering if we could have like 10 minutes on the beginning of the agenda to frame our meeting um, with um, Vanessa Rule and 350's um, Just Transitions campaign where they reached out to Vermonters. It is true. We don't have a Just Transition moment at the beginning and that was our commitment to do that. And so if we do do that, um, that is a suggestion about what to do. Um, steering committee members, if we were to put at the top of this agenda, you'll see there is a just transitions moment at the top of the next agenda. Um, if we were to put that at the top, um, uh, do you have some ideas of what might go into that moment? Whether it's what Vanessa Rule is suggesting and or other ideas? I don't know if Jane is still available, but I know that my understanding is that there's been kind of a, a um, kind of a, a list of options generated, and I would just be kind of curious about the context of who, else, who what other kind of voices have been under consideration. I, I wouldn't want to kind of jump ahead to to say yes to one in particular when we're not aware of the full context of others. That, um, but I agree that we should be consistent with that commitment um, at the beginning of our agendas. Thanks. Lauren? So to build off of what Jared just said, I think, I think Iris of Just Transitions wants to sponsor that conversation and so that it's kind of endorsed by that subcommittee of this. I think that's a, that would be the appropriate way to, to add them to the agenda. So maybe that's something, maybe your subcommittee has already talked about that or something you guys can confirm on your meeting this week and then we can add it that way. As a, as a process for inclusion. Yeah, we, we haven't gotten a chance to talk about it yet and we definitely can bring it up at our meeting. I, I think even if we end up going with a different Just Transitions moment, it would be important to set aside some time in this agenda though to hear from um, 350 about their campaign because they've been reaching out to Vermonters about, um, uh, about what a Just Transition looks like and doing some of this outreach. So, I mean, I'll just, I'll just leave that there and maybe Vanessa will have comments at the end of the meeting. Thanks. Thanks, Iris. Okay, so let's definitely make a space for that at the beginning of this meeting um, and or make a space for just transitions. And it sounds like what you, I'm hearing from several steering committee members is let's take stock about what else is in the hopper that we know we meant to do on this. Um, and let's hear, um, I'm not quite sure what you would like to say about this steering committee. Do you want to just empower Jane to make a decision based on what's going on and the uh, and the options in front of us? Is that the best option, or do you all have a different suggestion on how to move forward on this issue of filling up that piece of the agenda? I liked Lauren's suggestion, but it, am I did I hear correctly, Iris, that Just Transitions is not going to be able to meet or make a recommendation on that? There is a nice symmetry there of. Um, I, I'm pretty sure we are having a meeting this Thursday. Please someone correct me if I'm wrong because I have been messed up with that by week schedule, but we can try and discuss that there um, and then bring it back. But I don't know if that would be all the time to add that. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, so it sounds like the pathway is hopefully just transitions can sort this out and um, with some help from Jane. Jane, is that you on the phone trying to say something? Yeah, I was, that, I was just um, suggesting that uh, just transitions is meeting this week and um, it's not on the agenda. So I would encourage Iris to reach out to Sarah and Sue about having it added to the agenda to ensure there was time. Great. Okay. Does that seem reasonable for everybody, steering committee members? Great. Okay. Let's take a peek at the other agenda and see how we solve this problem uh, that Jared's put up and also the issue of <clears throat> um, the definitions. In the following week on October 5th, um, we plan to have a just transition reflection and have the equity consultant explaining the process uh, that that person's uh, intending to do um, and will be just getting underway. 
So we have that for the following week to make sure we don't have any uh, uh, <laughs> contracting challenges. Uh, so that's scheduled for there as a just transitions moment. Um, <clears throat> Then we have a presentation from the technical consultants on the um, doing the work on the mitigation pathways and adding up to the statutory requirements and, and how that all looks. And that's the, uh, and we've budgeted some time for that. Um, and this is just an informational presentation. There's no decision that we need to make around it. Um, and then we get the task leads from the cross-sector subcommittee to really lay out um, pathway strategies and actions in the same way we had the week before with the other two subcommittees. So here we've budgeted, um, uh, what is that, uh, 25 minutes? <clears throat> uh, per uh, sector essentially. So transportation, then buildings, um, and then electric, and then non-energy, which is everything else. Um, and so that's what we budgeted up and it really is quite a bit of time. <laughs> and so it's unclear how you would get some time back in this meeting unless we extended the meeting a little bit. Um, or otherwise crush things up a little bit if we wanted to make space um, for having either the uh, greenhouse gas inventory and supplemental accounting question and, uh, um, and uh, the definitional question. So when subcommittee members look at this, how do you react to this challenge of where we would slot in these two pieces where we're getting signals that they may not be quite ready uh, for prime time next Tuesday? What are people's reactions to this? I think one of the questions is when did the agendas have to be finalized by? I'd like to, I mean, ideally we could handle one in one meeting and one in the other to but we're not gonna know which one is more ready for discussion and presentation at the council until after our science and data subcommittee meeting tomorrow. So tomorrow is certainly fine. I think we wanna get in the habit of sending out pre-read materials, particularly materials of something that's like content that'll go into the, the, the initial plan, uh, giving people ample time to read that. So if we have a Tuesday meeting, we want to send things out Wednesday, or Thursday, the day before the latest, I would say. So tomorrow's Wednesday. Uh, if you all want to discuss sort of internally which one you're most ready for on one and then take your pick and make sure you have the materials ready for the for the council to review. Does that work, Jared? Yeah, and then I can follow up with with Jane and you right after the meeting, David. Gotcha. Okay. Um, steering committee members, in addition to Jared, thoughts on this, how to slot in these things, other questions about how to make these agendas work? Okay. All right, so specifically on the agendas, the things we're changing are a just transitions moment in the October or September 28th one, and we are, um, hopefully going to get just transition subcommittee to help us guide if uh, we'll have the 360 or 350 um, Vermont presentation or something else that feels right. Um, we are going to work with Jared and the uh, science and data subcommittee tomorrow to figure out which one of those two pending issues goes on the 28th and which one will go on the 5th and we'll squish things and make time. Uh, does anybody have problems with extending if we need to extend just a little bit on the fifth to tack in a little bit more time in the end. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, okay, so that's the agendas. Um, I think uh, that was it in less there's anything else that I'm missing that we thought we would talk about today uh, before we do some public comment? We talked about the decision-making protocol. We have a plan in place to make that. Uh, you all are gonna provide some input here to us. We're gonna shoot it up 
and have it be part of the September 28th, but we're not asking for any decisions on it in the 28th. Um, okay. Uh, we talked about the two things, the cross-cutting issues and the prioritization. We have plans and for both of those. And now we have the agendas. Great. All right. Uh, shall I move to public comment? Anything else before I, I shift to public comment? Okay, let me stop sharing. Okay, great. Let's take a, a few minutes of public comment. Um, if anybody would like to uh, say anything, um, I know Vanessa Rule, you were interested in, in talking, so um, please go ahead. Others, if you want to say something, just feel free to raise your hand in Zoom uh, and get in the queue. Vanessa, you wanna go ahead? Sure, thank you. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, I just wanted to provide a little context uh, for our ask. So I'm the lead organizer for 350 Vermont and I'm representing about 16,000 members. Um, and wanna thank you all for your hard work and you know appreciate the complexity that you're uh, faced with and the incredibly hard task that you have taken on um, and understand you're operating under time pressure. Um, and at the same time, we know that being able to achieve the Global Warming Solutions Act goals is gonna require the involvement of Vermonters. Uh, you can't do this alone. Um, and we're really concerned that Vermonters have not been engaged uh, earlier in the process. I know we have the public engagement sessions that are, um, that are taking place. One of our concerns is that people are gonna be reacting to the plans that are being proposed uh, through those and haven't had a chance to really think for themselves about what they wanna see. So we have, organized um, in the last week and a half, we engage, we've engaged 173 people uh, across the state and we have more to engage in Rutland, Thetford, Randolph, Brattleboro, Bristol, Middlebury. Um, and we have a couple more online meetings to go um, to really just ask people what they wanna see and what this transition is gonna look like, needs to look like for it to work for them. Um, and so we would like to share those findings with you uh, directly, not through the consultants. We wanna be able to speak to the whole climate council um, and to share what our uh, just transition asks are. So that is what we're requesting. And, uh, you know, we have made this uh, process open to anybody who wants to join. And uh, 350 Vermont's agenda is the people's agenda. So that is what that is about. Thanks, Vanessa, for that clarity. That's helpful. Um, okay, great. Um, are there other comments? Folks who are observing our meeting today would like to make. Okay, great. Okay, and uh, as mentioned, the public uh, meetings are happening this week. Uh, so if anybody's listening and wants to be part of that, please do. They're, uh, they're posted on the website um, and there are opportunities to engage there. Anything else folks for you? Sign off today. Steering committee members, anything else? Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Take care. We'll be in touch. Bye. All the best.